today I'm reviewing the Bioderma Photoderm Aquafluid SPF. And really quick, I just want to say, purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com. Check out my Patreon community or click on the Amazon link below. Okay, so these were, this is another sunscreen I picked up at Look Fantastic's UK page. They should be paying me like a referral fee because I'm advertising for them a lot. Anyway, that's where I picked up most of the European type sunscreens, where is in the US, it's difficult to get them because the FDA is about 50 years behind on sunscreen approvals. Literally, I think it's like been since 1970 since they approved any new filters. Something like that. Something crazy. So anyway, there's some ways around it. I like to find the way around it because, you know, if you live in the US and you're using a typical um, chemical sunscreen, you're not really getting great UVA coverage. And UVA rays are ones that cause wrinkles and fine lines and skin damage. So keep that in mind. Most Americans probably would age so much better if they had access to European sunscreens, but most of them probably, a lot of them probably don't even know what they're missing until you've tried them. And I, at least I didn't. So Anyway, Bioderma calls this a very high sun protection with a fluid texture as light as water with a dry touch finish. Suitable for all skin types, even combination to oily skin, skin that is sensitive to or intolerant to all types of sunlight, very fair skin with freckles, and skin that is exposed to maximum sunlight or anybody that really just wants to prevent aging. Okay, so... Let me get to my first criteria, which is packaging, and I like the packaging. Nice squeeze to bottle, although it does have a tendency to be very goopy when you open it up, and it's got kind of a needle nose tip on it. So just keep that in mind. Once you start, once you dump it over, it'll start leaking out, and I'll uh, apply it in a second. So, okay, no issues with that. In terms of denatured or drying types of alcohol, this does not have any of those. So that's always a good thing. Uh, even though it's got a nice liquid texture, no drying alcohols does contain some fatty alcohols such as C20-22, which are a good type of alcohol. Um, a few of you mentioned the Crave Beauty Beat the, Sh Beat the Sunscreen, Beat the Sun Sunscreen, which I reviewed a few days ago and Really liked a lot of the characteristics of it, but we're not so excited that alcohol is higher up on the ingredient list. In my opinion, this is a good alternative to that. It's got all of the good characteristics of it without the alcohol. So I mentioned that as something worth checking out if you were have very sensitive skin or a bit nervous about that. So something worth considering. In terms of fragrance, this does not have any fragrance in it, which is great, and no scent at all. It doesn't even have the chemical sunscreen smell, which most or a lot of chemical sunscreens have. So this one's awesome because there's literally no scent to it. So very great for sensitive skin. In terms of the manufacturing location, this one is made in France, so no issues at all with that. SPF coverage, which is UVB coverage, is 50 plus. So that means it's great. I recommend at least 30 every day. And 50 is great, especially if you wear a foundation over your sunscreen. The more layers you apply over sunscreen, the more diluted the coverage potentially can be. I saw on a chart the other day, it was a sunscreen product. And the chart had the list of order of ingredients or what you use. So you cleanse, you tone, serum, uh, sunscreen, primer, then foundation. And I thought, you know what, I always apply my primer before the sunscreen just because any layer you put over it has a potential to kind of uh, decrease the amount of protection you're getting so something worth considering I always apply my primer beforehand although it kind of sometimes defeats a bit of the point of a primer so even just foundation could kind of dilute it a little bit so I that's why I think in my opinion 30 is the least but 50 is good especially if you're gonna apply foundation or makeup over it it's just you're getting much better protection Although one thing to keep in mind, the amount you go over 30, you're not getting, you're not getting 20 more than 30. It kind of decreases a little bit the higher up you go, but it's still stronger and better. So, okay. In terms of the UVA protection factor, 
This one has a PPD of 24, which is something I wanted to remember to mention it more often, which is persistent pigment darkening. So 16 and up on that scale qualifies as ad adequate protection. The higher up the number, the better. Some sunscreens have demonstrated a PPD of 65 or higher. So that's very good coverage. So this one's 24, so that's pretty good up there. Pretty good up there. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty high up there. So uh, I have no issues with that. It's probably much better than the average U.S. sunscreen. Okay, then in terms of the filters used in this, we've got avobenzone, which is a UVA ray absorber, which is typically unstable, but it can be helped with the use of other filters in it, which can help it be a bit more stable. Although avobenzone on its own for just UVA rays is probably what most uh, U.S. sunscreens have, and it's not not good enough in my opinion so then we've got octocrylene which is a uvb absorber and it also has the ability to absorb some short uva rays i'm sorry if you can hear my dogs barking i don't know someone must be walking up and down the street and or there's a squirrel in the yard so i'm sure you can hear it i'm sorry okay then we've got uh methylene you know there must be like a turkey in the yard or something okay then we've got methylene bis benzotrion tetramethylbutaphenol which is also known as bis octrazole which is a broad spectrum uva and uvb ray absorber it also has some ability to reflect and scatter uv light so it's a great filter then we've got Tinsorb S, which is a UVA and UVB ray absorber, also very photo stable. So we've got a good variety of filters for both UVA and UVB rays, so I have no issues with that. Uh, then we get into the white cast, and I will apply it. And this one really doesn't have a white cast. See how liquidy it comes out? It's a Man, the dogs are just going crazy. Okay, so after you apply it, it does take a minute to really soak it in. But for the most part, there's not much of a white cast. Initially, it looks like you're going to have a white cast. It maybe has a very mild white cast, but for the most part, in my opinion... This is one of the better sunscreens in terms of white casts because there isn't much. Once it absorbs, it really sets to a nice matte finish with not much minimal white cast, if anything. And there you go. So I, in my opinion, you can't really see a white cast. So, and after it's so give after you give it a couple minutes to soak in, it really has no white cast. Lincoln, hi, what trouble are you causing? Those tails are just out of control. Naughty. Okay, so I'll do a pH test just for guys and gals that love the pH. So, I would say it's a pH of about five-ish, maybe five five and a half maybe so no issues with that one okay in terms of texture obviously it's a very goopy liquidy texture uh, which isn't always the easiest to work with because it is so liquidy although I guess in the title aqua fluid I guess you get that um, although what I like about it is after it's soaked in after you've given it a few minutes to soak in it really sets to a nice matte non-sticky finish which is a big deal for a lot of people. Um, so after you give it a minute or two to soak in, it's really not sticking, doesn't transfer a ton. So that's always a nice factor as well. So no issues with the texture, although I guess it says it's fluid. It, eh. Ease of use. So smooths over skin very easily. Slightly hydrating, works well over most moisturizers and primers. Uh, if you give a minute to absorb, it sets to a nice invisible finish. A great option for those that don't wear foundation, or even if you do wear foundation, 
a uh, good option for that too. But I know a lot of people that don't wear foundation really like something that sets to a nice matte finish with no noticeable white cast. So there we go. And now that it's absorbed, it's not sticky at all. So very nice. Okay, then in terms of antioxidants and beneficial ingredients, this one contains a lot of slip and basic hydrating ingredients, not a ton of real beneficial ingredients or antioxidants, which is kind of, in my opinion, the major downside with this one is there's really not a ton of great stuff. It's got vitamin E, which is great, xylitol and mannitol, which are both humectants, and that's about it for really exciting beneficial ingredients. So if you're gonna use this one, I really recommend applying over a really good vitamin C serum or another great hydrating serum or moisturizer, something that's got some good things for your skin. So your skin isn't just totally relying on this to do it all because it really, it can, it can block the rays, but it can't help uh, really hydrate skin or anything else for that matter. So keep that one in mind. That in terms of acneogenic ingredients, does have a few acne triggers. So we've got glycerol sterate citrate, which is a fungal acne trigger, and then vitamin E, which is can be very uh, acneogenic for some people. So that's about it. So pretty friendly for acne prone skin, with the exception of the vitamin E. Then we've got animal testing, and unfortunately, Bioderm is not cruelty free, which surprised me because for some reason, I guess it's been a while since I reviewed anything from Bioderma, but uh, they are sold in mainland China, so they are not cruelty free. Then in terms of performance, I'm really happy with it. it Last nicely on skin without breaking up foundation or becoming oily or greasy feeling throughout the day. Uh, partially water resistant as well. Great for sensitive skin, especially with the fact that it has no alcohol and no fragrance. Uh, performs above average. It exceeded my expectations, in my opinion. So I was quite happy with it. It does take a little bit of finesse to remove at the end of the day. The more water resistant the sunscreen is, the trickier I find them to be to remove. They just require a bit more effort. So... Uh, if you use this one, it might be wise to do a two-step cleanse, an oil-based cleanser first, and then a soapy cleanser after that, uh, just to make sure you remove it all, because you certainly don't want to go to bed with any traces of sunscreen on your skin, just for so many reasons, especially acne and things like that. Okay, then in terms of the price, so this is a full size, which is 1.33 ounces, which is the equivalent of 40 milliliters, and it retails for about $17 uh, wherever you look. So that averages out to about $0.42 cents per milliliter, which is in the very affordable range. It's not the cheapest sunscreen I've reviewed, but it's also not the most expensive. So that's a nice factor. So uh, on the Sarah score scale, with 15 being perfect, this one scored a 12. So pretty good. A couple things I might mess with on it. Maybe not, but... Uh, overall, it's still a pretty, pretty darn good option. So anyway, I'm interested in hearing from you guys if you've had a chance to try this. I think there's another Bioderma product coming up that I'll be reviewing this week as well. So uh, be sure to stay tuned for that one. Uh, so anyway, love hearing from you guys. So leave your comments and I will see you more tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys.